Hello, Cryptids! Hi. Are you ready to rumble? Ah! Hello. Uh, I am hyper. Hype. Hyper. I took a bath. I exfoliated. I am smooth. It's smooth. And it's everyone's fucking problem. Ah! Ah! So, hello. Welcome to the stream. I have gotten glasses after my last pair got sat upon. They are so stylish. So beautiful. Look at them. Look stylish. At them. Look at them. They are amazing. 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 Uh, amazing. Amazing. Anyway, um, Twitch thought it could fucking defeat me and have fucking character limits on the content warnings. And I, I showed it. I managed to fit everything. 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 And there, there's a lot today. Mm -hmm. So, hello, Cryptids. Welcome to our uh, the House of Fatal Morgana stream. We are doing Salvage Part 1. And right. there is a lot of new fucked up shit that you guys didn't know about, but you're gonna find out about it, and it's gonna happen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, well... Um, this game includes graphic depictions of violence, torture, murder, domestic and child abuse, suicide, sexual assault, rape, psychological manipulation, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, and themes centered on religion, racism, bigotry, and other troubling topics. Salvage specifically includes child abuse, bloodletting and drinking, murder, cannibalism, severed limbs, slavery, human trafficking, psychological manipulation, imprisonment resulting in death, suicide, and murder of sex workers. With a nice and little misogyny. Bit. I was, I was, I was gonna make that the spice. I was just gonna say, oh. just a smidge. It's just, it's, it's dropped in for flavor. You know, just a little bit of the misogyny just sprinkled on for flavor. Yeah, season to taste. <laughs> um, but yeah, there is a fuck ton today. A fuck ton. Loads. Loads. And Since... yeah, they, they murder you and your people. I'm sorry, Snook. I'm sorry. Yeah, Snook. Oh, um, also, the since uh, the, the thing has just reminded me, we now have um, a new, a, what, what is the a term? Affiliation. Affiliation. Affiliation, yes, that is the word. I was like, it starts with an A, and it has, it has an A and an F in it somewhere, and that's all I remember. But yes, Affiliation um, with Poggers. It is a energy drink company. You can fuel your body, fuel our streams, all at the same time, 10% discount. Highly recommend. Um... I had them a while back at a convention. I was next. Uh, I was in a nice enough situation to be shared with, and it was good. I liked it. Um, so we're actually getting some because we can use our own discount code and also save the monies. And uh, you know we're we're doing that, saving a little monies, getting them in on Saturday. Have energy drink. Not that I need it right now. Do I look like I need an energy drink? Like honestly, look at me right now and tell me I need an energy drink. You need an energy drink. You son of a bitch. Okay, I guess I need an energy drink. Well, I'll have to wait till Saturday. It's fine. It's fine. <clears throat> My voice has gone fucky wucky. Um, it's just, you know, the... <laughs> so, the voice is maybe a little bit off, but I will do my best. It's mostly going to impact Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you need an energy drink. Oh, I can't believe it. Two people have told you you need an energy drink. I can't believe it. Well, I don't have any. It's not getting here till Saturday. Oh, yeah. Have to have one on Saturday then. I guess I'll have to have like four on Saturday. No, you will have one on Saturday. <laughs> well, what did I say? What, what did I say? I, I said one. Yeah, you're right. Four <laughs> and one can be mistaken for each other. <laughs> anyway, all right, we're, we're ready to move the game screen over. Let's go. Ba -ba 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 boom. Boom. <sighs> Time to roll the game. Oh, I should actually scroll to the top of my thing so I can have my list of voices. I do. Mm -hmm. Inspect the memory. Inspect. Okay, I thought I was pretty sure it was this one. Breakdown. Please do not keep me waiting for long, Master. I need like four energy drinks. It's over. What? <laughs> oh, he can have four little smaller cups, so it's the equivalent of one big boy. <laughs> it, it's fine. I'm just gonna put them in shot glasses and throw them back like it's shots. fucking shots. 
It's like shots, 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 and just throwing back the energy drink shots. It'll be great. That 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 could go very badly very quickly. It could. It will. No, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I have to be very careful with my caffeine intake, but it's fine. It's fine. As long as I have what is registered as one serving, no matter, you know, how many cups I stretch one serving into, or how few cups, I can put it in one little shot. It doesn't matter. As long as I limit myself to one serving, I can have as many energy drinks as I want. <laughs> yes, and shots. <laughs> Time press downward. What does this mean? I think this is the word. Time press downward. And then at long last, you arrive. Yes. It, it, it is you, talking to the empty chair. To the empty chair. Oh, splendid. You've finally awoken. I've simply been waiting so long for this moment. It turns on the ceiling fan, I'm warm. I'm hyper and I'm having hot flashes. Uh-huh. Speaking of hot flashes, I'm finally getting my testosterone situation fixed. Thank fuck. I have... I have gone so long without my testosterone shot. So long without his two free wellness shots. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if I, I, I had a, an appointment today. They're not free and that was the problem. <laughs> they, they weren't free, yeah. They were not free. They were the exact opposite of free. They cost a fucking fortune. Um, I, had, I had an appointment today and my, my therapist is amazing. She went in and she's like, I'm going to fix this for you. So she contacted people, she got things sorted out, she made shit happen, and I'm getting my testosterone back. And she's like, give me your doctor's number, I'm gonna call that bitch right now and we'll get this fixed. Let's go. She, she, she did not hesitate to help. I love this woman. She is amazing. Yes. I miss her. I miss her greatly. She used to also be my therapist, but, um, you know, then she kind of realized we were married and it's kind of a conflict of interest to be seeing both of us, so. Yeah. Tough time. Miss that thing. Tending to the mansion all by my lonesome, ensuring it was ready for your return, master. Whenever that time may be. When I caught sight of you through the window, my heart fluttered. The time had finally arrived. Oh my, you do not know who I am. Do you not know who you are either? That is quite the predicament. Then how about this? I am a servant of this mansion, and as such, I am familiar with the many incidents that have taken place here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mine is not a seat. Mine is, 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 is secure. It is well structured. <laughs> <laughs> He's got on his brace because he keeps fucking it up. I keep fucking up my ankle, so I have like a brace. seven times now. Yeah, I have a, I have a brace on it now because I took off my boots. If I don't have the brace on, I have my boots on. Well, both seem to help stabilise my ankle. Yeah, he uh, ties his docks so tight that like they become basically a second skin. Yes. If he wears them long enough, they will actually fuse to his feet and he can't get them off. True story. <laughs> it's happened. Happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bring on shoes. Sorry. <laughs> I shall show you the history of this house, Master. Let us be off then, and fear not. I merely entreat you not to let go of my hand. Should you hold it tightly, you need not worry about being washed away by the waves of history. No matter what happens, you mustn't let go of my hand. Oh look, there, there the person is. The chair isn't empty. Whoa, she's Whoa. not crazy after all. Whoa. No matter what happens, no matter what you see, never again. Let go of this hand. That is everything. I prepared a number of things to say when she finished her tale, but I can't manage to put any of them into words. I almost hate myself for thinking it would be so easy. For letting myself hope that I could simply pull her back to her old self, to accept whatever had happened to her. Take her hand in mine, and that would solve everything. The truth is so much worse than I imagined, so much more harrowing. She was subjected not only to her own terrible fate, but to every single one of this house's tragedies. The tales she told me are things that she witnessed 
with her own eyes. How can I possibly blame her for forgetting me, for forgetting herself? After so many hundreds of years. No, I should be. Why? Why didn't you come for me? Why couldn't I have returned before she was so far gone? Why... Why did you show up now? Giselle. Because you opened the door to my memories, I now remember everything. But I didn't want to remember. I didn't want to be reminded of all those empty years. Of the people who passed on leaving me behind. Of you, who refused to show up no matter how much I begged. I'm not the Giselle you knew anymore. I may have my memories, but I cannot go back to that time. My hands are stained with blood, my soul worn thin. The girl who would laugh at the simplest things, who would tell silly jokes and wasn't afraid to speak her mind, doesn't exist anymore. That Giselle is dead. How can you say I am the same girl? How can you say I feel the same way I did? How can you be so sure that, even now, I still love you? Can you deny the possibility that I no longer yearn for you, but the white-haired girl? Can you deny the possibility that my love for you has transformed into hate? She brings her hands up towards my throat, and I make no attempt to move out of her way. When her fingers brush against my skin, they feel as frigid as death itself far colder than anything I have felt from her thus far. If she were to wrap her hands around my neck, she wouldn't even have to squeeze to stop me from breathing. This is the fork in our road. One word will decide everything. I don't have much time. I have to say something before the cold robs me of my voice. If we want all the endings, we have to wait and not answer. Oh. I wanted to deny it. She may have forgotten me, but what she still felt remains, as evidenced by her attraction to the white-haired girl who had many physical similarities to me. Her feelings are still there. I sincerely believe that. But her arctic gaze caused me to waver for the briefest moment. Perhaps I only wanted to deny it for my own selfish reasons. It was only a few short seconds, but those seconds decided it all. Farewell, Michael. She slides her slender, slender fingers down my neck, and then gently shoves me back. Giselle! I'm falling, sinking into my own darkness. I reach my hand out, but I cannot grasp anything. Her hand, the hand I held for all this time, is so far away. I try to shout, but nothing comes out. I can neither answer her original question, nor say her name. Down and down. To the infinite void. Darkness consumes everything. My voice, my hands, my very being, and her gaze. My consciousness slips away. Why? Why did I hesitate? I wish I could have at least told you that I still loved you, even if you did not love me. Are you sure you really wanted to let him go? Yes, I'm sure. I see. I don't think I'll ever understand. If you hate someone, you should chain them down and torture them for all eternity. It was the perfect opportunity to have trapped his soul. I do not hate him. Oh, is that so, my dear? After everything you said, I simply assumed. I could never come to hate him. I could never want to see him dead or tortured. Oh, then why did you say what you did? I don't think you would understand. Probably not. I'm not particularly interested in understanding either. It doesn't matter what happened in the interim. In the end, nothing's changed, has it, my dear? You're still my darling devoted maid. With enough time, you will once more forget your name. <laughs> what a wonderful world this is. Dun dun.
Um, for one moment of hesitation. It might be best if you had denied because I don't know what bond it would be. And I don't yeah, I figured. Uh, it, you have to play like two and a half seconds because once it hits three seconds, it's too long. Um, so it makes sense for me to be the one to click it. Yeah. I, I know it's somewhere close to here, so I'm just going to save here. Sal. Salve. Salve. <laughs> Alright, let's make the correct choice this time. I'll deny it. While I was floating in the darkness, I heard a voice. Regrettably, it took me far too long to realize that it was your voice crying for help, calling for me. You may have lost your hold on your old self, but somewhere deep down you kept calling for me, which is how I found my way here. I refuse to believe that it isn't real. I refuse to stomp on a love that survived for hundreds of years. By all means, hate me. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. I don't care if you spit vile at me for the rest of eternity. I will not let go of this hand. Because you asked me not to. To kill you right now. If that's what you want, then go right ahead. But I'll fight you with all that I've got. Giselle, I've missed you so much. I can't lose you again. I don't care if it makes you despise me. I don't care if you think I'm being inconsiderate. I want to save you. But, but, I, I'm not the Giselle you once knew. I'm an abomination. My mind and body are twisted beyond recognition. I'm a disgusting monster. The woman you fell in love with doesn't exist anymore. So just forget about me. You are the one who should be saved. Set free from me. You look the same to me. Your manner of speaking, your temperament, your physical appearance, all that may have changed. But you're still the same Giselle that I love. You should never have done anything for a foolish girl like me. You gave your life to save mine, and I hated you for that. I never once considered how you felt with those knives, po okay, knives pointing their blades at you, or what drove you to allow me to live. I should have, but I didn't. I was the one who trusted the witch, and yet I complained when you never showed up. I unfairly resented you for it. I am a horribly self-centered person. You would be so much better off with someone pure and unburdened with all this nasty suspicion and doubt and animosity. You would be so much happier with someone like her. You said. You've been paying attention, haven't you? You were there for all the tales I told you. For everything that has happened up until this moment. So you should know just how loathsome a woman I am. Too weak to even keep herself together. No, Giselle. I'm nothing compared to her. Giselle! She literally did what she had to do to survive. Like, I don't think that makes her a bad person. No. I mean, 
maybe it doesn't make her a great one, but sometimes shit gets shit gets really bad for a person like that, and there's not really much you can do. Like, what was she supposed to do? Fight, like, fight tooth and nail against all the masters of the house? It wouldn't have ended any different because she can't, you know, she can't be killed. So what would they do, you know, stab her, set her on fire, whatever. Um, the only thing she could have done to stop any of them was kill them. Yeah. And, you know, they could do whatever to her and she would be fine. So, even if she fought them, unless she was willing to kill them, there was literally nothing she could do. It's not like she could die as an hour. Like, she had yeah. no options. Yeah. Absolutely no options. See? You haven't changed one bit. You still get louder and louder the more you lose your temper. I... Why do you feel the need to compare yourself to her? Because she's the better match for you. Giselle, I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. And I want you to believe me when I say that I dearly miss you from the bottom of my heart. I wanted you back and that's not changed. I... Believe me. I love you. Uh, uh, I, I miss you so much too. She leaps into my arms and she's just as cold as ever. Her warmth deprived body feels like the embodiment of all my mistakes. I wrap my arms around her and I'm in I'm immediately filled with an unparalleled, unparalleled relief from stomach. I'm, I'm like trying not to grieve. I'm Aww. like, I'm, I'm emotional. Aww, they love each other. Unlike fucking Monkey Toe, they love each other. <laughs> love each other. <laughs> love each other. <laughs> Even as she sobs into my chest, her body cold as ice. And then the darkness parts. We are once more at the top of the observation tower. It's still shrouded in a miasma of shadows, but we're back at the mansion now. We have emerged from the darkness in her heart. Michael? Yes? I'm sorry. For what? I never should have erased you from my memories. Yours are the memories I needed to hold on to tightest. I was so glad to hear you say you still loved me. Even after learning the truth about me. Thank you. So much. I'm incredibly relieved. As I watched, it felt like you were slipping farther and farther away from me, Giselle. It terrified me. Maybe it makes me a coward or pitiful. But I was truly afraid of you coming to hate me. I would never hate you, Michael. Ever. Thank you. We must leave this place. What? It would not be wise for us to remain here long. The air is still thick with darkness. But the front door won't open. And even if we could get out of here from somewhere, what would happen to us? We finally found each other again, after so long. I want to share a quiet, modest life with you like before. What if all that disappears when we step outside? After all, we are. She doesn't finish, but I feel like I know what she's going to say. We're different now. She stepped far outside the bounds of mortality. And the same could be said of me. I am the man known as Michael is long since dead. The mansion itself does not follow the rules of nature either. As beings no longer in possession of their proper forms, stepping outside these walls could very well mean the end of us. I can't say what may lay in store, but we must return. Even though by staying here, we could be together for all time? I don't imagine that it would be a very happy life. There's no sun here, no chirping birds, no trees or breeze to rustle the leaves. If we stay here, the nothingness will eat away at us. We have finally reattained our old selves. We need to take action now while we can. 
what if I say I want to stay here? Then I'll drag you out. <laughs> it's almost like we've switched places. Back then it was you who wanted to stay. It's also kind of funny hearing you speak favourably of the outside, and especially the sun. The words, that's all thanks to you, are on my lips before I can say them I find myself hypnotised by her smile. That smile has picked me up so many times. She claims it's her only redeeming feature, but if she didn't have it, my life would have gone a very different direction. I'm grateful to have gotten that back too. Hey, um, we're in the middle of a very, uh, touching reunion, wouldn't you say? I suppose so, yes. And wouldn't you say that's the certain way these things usually go? Oh. 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 Huh? Are you really going to make me say it? I was, um, hoping you might perhaps kiss me. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Seriously? What? Where did all that boldness from a second ago go? What happened to all that momentum? He used up all his stamina's. All his stamina stamina. It's all gone. No stamina's. No stamina's. Yeah, uh, about that. I think that might be more appropriate later. Your kitchen sink looks like you committed a serious crime in it. And that's an interesting uh, situation you're in, Bucket. What, what, what did you do to make the, the sink look like that? Oh, bucket, bucket can't hear me. Bucket <laughs> 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 in the towel. <laughs> We're all like, oh, it's so sweet. And that's like, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Love each other. Fuck. <laughs> um, you know, I know that Nut can't hear me, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's funny. Um, but fucking ads, well, like, do you, do you mean fucking ads as in, oh, you hate the ads? Or do you mean fucking ads as in you're getting some very, very targeted content? <laughs> <laughs> Curse Twitch. Aww. Curse the ads. Curse the Twitch. Red hair is back, baby. Oh. Shit, bucket has died. They're here, red. Oh, right. I didn't realize. It, it, the, the chat did not catch up right away for me. And so I was just like, what the fuck? Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was reading Bucket's message. Yeah, it's just Bucket's message hadn't popped up for me yet, so I was very confused. Add freedom. Add freedom. 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 <gasps> How much freedom? <laughs> <laughs> well, if only something would uh, sound off and let us know exactly how much freedom. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. find an exit. We're, you know, in a hurry. You're just making <laughs> excuses because you don't want to. I swear that's not it. Giselle, let's save that for when things aren't as crazy. Just, just fucking kiss her and be done. Like, this, this whole, like, I don't know, taking way more time. Free son. Free son. <laughs> Free son. I'm glad that you're happy with your hair. That yes. Red hair is the best. <laughs> I'm stuck in the walls. Please freeze on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you did not eat your chicken nuggies? We we have your chicken nuggies and your spaghettis from yesterday, and we thought that maybe you just were on a protest, but maybe... <laughs> going on a hunger strike or something. <laughs> like, why is he going on a hunger strike? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going on a hunger strike, but not really. The door's fucking slamming. The, the blind's moving on their own. Like... 
he's spooking up this house. Forget spooking up your farm. He's spooking up this house. He's spooking up the house. <laughs> <laughs> what you get when you know you're a demon and your husband is a ghost and your son is a ghost possessed teddy bear mm -hmm. these are the things you get no not the not the dye stain not the dye stain you know one time i had like bright blue hands for like three days because i dyed my hair with my bare hands because i didn't have any gloves and i was too lazy to go to the store yeah. in my defense i didn't have a car at that time so going to the store meant a three mile walk so, you know, I was like, eh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I can't relax and enjoy it right now. What are you, 12? I think we've established he is a 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hush. All right, fine. But you'd better keep your word. Got it? Promise. So then, let's find our way out of the mansion. There, our frozen time should begin moving again. That's hopefully Ooh. where our future awaits. Must be good at it then. Must be good at it. I just throw on a glove, put the dye in my hand, and just kind of go like, like this. Yeah, it's, just it's as if it's shampoo. You're yep. just going to like scrub at the hair. I just shampoo it in. It's, it's worked for me thus far. Yeah. Like... You know, my hair from when I, like, when my demon form, where I can actually dye my hair, you know, dyeing it in my demon form doesn't fucking work, because it just goes back to being red instantly. Um, but, you know, my human form, my hair is quite dark. So, um, the dyes I use are meant for dark hair, and they just kind of add a color tint to it, versus, like, fully dyeing it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why if my hair is blue, but it's not, like, bright blue. Um, so just shampooing it in kind of works, because it's not changing the color of my hair by much. But I guarantee, you know, I would I would run into problems if I actually bleached my hair and tried to dye it. You know, doing it the way I do it, I would have the most uneven dye job of all time. The fucking stream is taunting you with Big Sippy time when, you know, you, you can't go to Big Sippy right now. You can't get Big Sippy at home. Big Sippy. Big Sippy at home is uh, taking drinks from downstairs. <laughs> Big Sippy at home. So Big Sippy is three things. One, Panarf. Two, um, random energy drinks that we get because, you know, spirit needs the energies. And three, the random beefus that we get downstairs from the courtesy fridge that I get glared at for taking things out of. <laughs> yeah. That's what Big Sippy means. non salad left beef is one very specific place, but Big Sippy can be many things to many people. Big Sippy is many things. <laughs> I'm sure for some, Big Sippy is even water sports. You know, imagine that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, is it Ooh. good? Ooh, I'm glad it was good. We're getting um, a blue raspberry energy drink, and it's coming in on Saturday, and we're looking forward to it. Ooh, blue raspberry. We even have, like, the little shaky cups, so we can sit there and go shake, 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 shake. Shake, shake, shake. Which, you know, I'm sure we will do until we drive each other mad. Mm -hmm. We'll just sit there and be like, nothing in the cup, but shake it anyway. Oh, you're Meek. obsessed with lemonade. Understandable. Lemonade, lemonade is, is fucking great. Yeah. Um, you know, like, hashtag non-spawn, but, like, um, if you've never had the energy drink at Panera, the lemonade energy drink, the strawberry one, yeah, the strawberry mint one is mwah. It's most of what I get when I go there. I get that, Dr. Peeper, or I make myself an Arnold Palmer. Like, that's, that's it. Those are those are my drinks. I get the strawberry mint, charged lemonade, the beefus, or sorry. You can steal some of our blue raspberry, but there's also a ten percent discount code up there if you want your own blue raspberry. Yes. Because they've got like an energy drink that's blue raspberry, and then they've got like a hydration and a sleep drink, and they're different flavors, but they only have like one flavor at a time. The blue raspberry is currently the energy flavor. So mm -hmm. do with that information what you will, son. I haven't had all of Dalton's raspberry lemonade. It's really good. I've had aspens and I've had uh chilies. Nope, you've had strawberry lemonade at chilies. Oh. It's not raspberry, it's strawberry. Is it not raspberry, is it strawberry? Mm -hmm. oh. It's strawberry. Strawberry. I didn't realise that um all of Dalton's did raspberry lemonade. Mm-hmm. 
They do raspberry, and I think I think they do raspberry, strawberry, and mango. There's one place, and I can't fucking remember where it is. It's like Texas Roadhouse or Olive Garden or something, where they do a blue raspberry lemonade, but I can't for the life of me remember where the fuck it is. But we do do crime. You can steal the blue raspberry, but you can also, you know, if you want your own. Yeah, we're just telling you, or if you know, if you need more of it, more than you could possibly steal. Say there's more. Yes. <laughs> because we only got the one little bitty tub. One tub. We got the one little bitty tub because um somebody would drink an insane fucking amount if we had more than just one itty bitty tub. That so somebody might be me. He goes through the Gatorade so fast. And so I'm like, when we have the powdered energy drink, you realize you actually have to abide the directions on the container, right? You can't just put as much in there as tastes good because you will be off the walls. <laughs> 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 I had that I had that when I was um, back in Scotland I used to live in this house that had a bramble bush and I would pick up the bramble berries and I would squish them um, and I would be basically red it looked like I had just stuck my hand inside someone's gut because I would squish them and it would stain my hands red I used to go to my grandma's uh, my ex-grandma now <laughs> um, and she had like wooded area behind the house that had a bunch of wild berries in it and so me and my aunt who you know current aunt not not ex-aunt just current aunt um we used to go and um pick berries and stuff and they were so good so good so um i'm looking to try and find a picture to show spirit because i don't know if he's gonna know what these are but i used to pretend i was a giant and eat slightly unripe gooseberries <laughs> Which look like really tiny watermelon. They're basically like grapes with stripes on them. But they look like tiny watermelons. So I used to pretend I was a giant and just chomp on them in the woods. While getting attacked by bugs that wanted my berries. But I would go out there with just like a little container and just pick a full bowl of them and just shove them in my gob. Squish them between my fingers and toes, you know, just go absolutely fucking buck wild with it. I was a danger to myself as a kid because I would see bramble bushes and pick the brambles off and eat them. What the fuck? They, 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 they look like, they, 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 they look like this. So the, the, the black ones are ones that were ripe, the red ones are ones that are ripe. But oh, your pick. bramble bushes actually have fucking fruit on they them? They actually have fruit on them, yeah. The ones I've always been around have not had fruit on them. So I would just pluck them off and eat them, um, without cleaning them first. So I would just pull them off and go how, and yeah. So? I'm surprised that, that, you know, I would do it, like, I'm surprised that when I was younger I didn't, like, you know, get ill or anything, just picking random fucking berries off bushes and eating them. Yeah, see, I would pick berries off of bushes, but my aunt is a hippie. Like, she probably wears that title. She is a hippie. Mm -hmm. um, and she knows exactly what berries out in the wilderness you can and can't pick. She knows exactly what mushrooms you can and can't eat. You know, she's just great like that. Mm -hmm. So... I learned from her as a kid what I could and couldn't pick. So she just went, she went, you see this? You can eat this. You see this here? You eat this? You're going to be seeing colors for a week and you're going to vomit for like twice that. So don't do it. <laughs> about, okay. Okay. Well, how do you know? She's like, maybe I've done it before. Maybe I had to go to the hospital. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah, they were these little berries that almost look like cranberries, but they're not. Um, they're poisoned berries of some kind. Um, and I had this, I had to stop myself from eating them because she was like, you see these, eat these. She's like, you're gonna, you're gonna shit and vomit and die like in a solid 30 minute time window. Like do not touch these. And I'd be like, but they look so tasty. They look like cranberries. She's like, I do not care that they look like cranberries. Do not cease. Cease. <laughs> you're just gonna stick to Stardew Valley, fair enough. That's fair. That's fair. But yeah, she would teach me what I could and couldn't go after because, you know, she's like, I've spent like 30 years gathering this knowledge. I might as well use it. Mm -hmm. She would just take me and Keith and disappear us into the woods and <laughs> pick random fucking leaves and berries and mushrooms and shit. And we would just sit there and eat it yeah. in the woods. Scare the absolute crap out of Lawrence. Lawrence is like, they're in the woods. They're doing fucking witchy seance shit. I know it. They're doing witchcraft. 
I have yet to actually do witchcraft in the forest. Really? Yeah. I've done unintentional witchcraft in the forest, and I've done, like, memorial-based stuff in a field. And all I've done in forests is play with my friends and get stuck. I'm being stared at. You didn't share with me. You went in the country. <laughs> I don't care! <laughs> I'm looking at him in sheer fucking disbelief for not including me. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, it wasn't exciting. I, I then went home and me and my friend watched a movie and I, I passed out on him. <laughs> he's in my bedroom and I'm asleep and he's like, I should probably just sit and watch the movie. I don't know, my, my, my two times I've had, I've had fun giggling away in your lap while you're having a fucking crisis. <laughs> giggling away in your lap again while you were having a crisis. <laughs> I was just like, hee hee hee, everything's funny. And he's like, I'm the only sober person in this entire fucking neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you don't have the update yet? That's sad. Oh. That sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> it will be. No, we'll make it so. <laughs> Bro, that, that's, that's a fucking feel. That's a fucking feel. What, did you did you get a wellness shot directly to the brain and remember? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. If we leave this mansion, it should release our souls as well. And in doing so, it should finally provide her deliverance. So I mustn't hesitate. To end all of this for both of us, we must start again. This is where we... What? <gasps> Darkness. It's blackness purer than anything I've experienced in this house. Not a trace of light anywhere to be found. Why did I ever think the house would let us go so easily? Why did I ever think our time in the darkness was over? Michael! <sighs> the darkness surges through the open door like a wave flooding the observation tower like ivy growing wildly to cover every last inch of every surface consuming, defiling, eroding our fingers slip apart and concentrated rancor rains down upon us or are you unsure of who this is? Yeah. the witch! I'm not Ah, how hideous a world this is. No, Michael, please, please. Don't let go of my hand. But yeah, typically if you see red text, it's either Yuki Masa or the witch. Giselle! Michael! I said I would never let her go again. I said I would get her out of this place. Shop train. Oh. I swore I would. But as hard as I try to stretch, I can't reach her hand. Help, Michael. I can't move. I can't move my body. Ugh. This is all the witch, yeah. I went out of my way to give you a beautiful tragedy. So why must you so stubbornly insist on this ugliness? The more you struggle, my dears, the thicker and more palpable your filthiness becomes. Ah, oh, it's sickening. Wouldn't you agree? She always spat her bile with a song-like cadence. Singing like a little girl, chirping like a morning bird, she celebrates misery. And she watches for the worst possible moment to let out a cackle. Morgana! That train really just does not want to let us have fun. No. I mean, Morgana doesn't either. Maybe maybe Morgana controls the trains. It's like Mr. Nimbus and the police. <laughs> <laughs> Morgana controls the trains. Controls she does. Train. Every time I say it, it gets louder. <laughs> shut up. Shut Leave up. me alone, train. I said shut up. Shut train, up. why? Why is it so loud? 
I don't know. Honestly, my <laughs> guess is a car probably tried to cross the fucking road where the train intersects the road. Yeah. Probably. Because that sounded like very panicked. Because usually it's further off and it does that to let you know that it's coming. Mm -hmm. But this sounds like this sounds like um, there are cars being nuisances. Fuck's sake, cars. Stop it. Fuck's sake. I know, train. I'm right there with you. But we will keep reading in a moment, guys. We just... The train. <laughs> it's making it more dramatic, yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you basically teleported from the bed to the couch. That, 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 would, that would be funny. I have always woken up when I've fallen out of the bed. It, and the most, um, I don't prominent... fall out the bed, I get fucking kicked out the bed, but fortunately, only twice by you. <laughs> the most prominent memory I have of falling out the bed is the night my youngest sister was born. I fell out the bed and my dad came through and told me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the phone with mum with the hospital, um, and they were telling him that I was like, like, your wife's giving birth, and... All he hears is me falling out of the bed. <laughs> and he comes through and tells me to shut up. And I'm so delirious. Like, I am I am half a, half asleep. I have just been very abruptly woken up. And I'm being told to shut up. And I'm like, but I don't know what I did wrong. Yeah, see, I would randomly have to share beds with Keith. And anytime that happened, I'd get shoved out onto the floor. <laughs> um... I had a very brief period where um, I would startle myself awake and I wouldn't like roll out the bed and then wake up. I would startle myself awake and in waking up, I would fall out the bed. Yeah. But I haven't done that in years. But yeah, um, one time I um, had one of my night terrors and I was like, you know, having sleep paralysis and I finally got to where I could move again and I fucking was, I was sitting there trying to move with all my might and I couldn't. So when I could finally move again, I threw myself like three feet to the fucking left. <laughs> um... And so I hear stomping up the stairs and he, mind you, Claire would keep the TV on at almost full volume right underneath my room. So I could, you know, I, I always had issues sleeping because I would suddenly hear gunshots in the middle of the night because all we would watch were war movies yeah. and uh, uh, cop buddy films and shit. So I would just randomly hear gunfire and wake up and not be able to sleep. But, you know, I fall out the bed because I'm having a night there and I hear stop, stop, stop. Door, door like opens up shut the fuck up door shut the slam shut i get back into the bed and i hear stomp 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 back down the stairs where he proceeds to make more noise than me falling out of the bed could have ever fucking caused and i remember thinking in that particular moment that it was so funny that i laughed loud enough that he came back up the stairs and he's like if you don't shut the fuck up this door is coming off the hinges i i am fucking serious you're clearly up to some shit up here <laughs> and I was just like laughing my ass off because it was so funny. <laughs> so I got brought downstairs and I had to sit in the corner where I was having laughing fits for like the next two hours. <laughs> I would just randomly be sitting there just go <laughs> because he got tired of coming upstairs to tell me to shut up. So I just had to sit in a chair until I passed out basically. Yeah, but I was just... taken, it would make it louder, but yeah, no common sense. No, no. Claire and Lawrence have no common sense. But yeah, I was just sat there and he's like basically he's having me sit in the chair until I exhaust myself and pass out. Mm -hmm. But I'm delirious at this point because, you know, I'd had like two hours of sleep the past like three days because of my, my night terrors were bad. And so I'm just fucking delirious laughing myself to death in the corner. <laughs> trying to sneak peeks at the movie on occasion. But, you know, you'd just be sitting there, something really serious had happened in the movie, and I'm like, <laughs> And be like, I told you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm sorry, I can't help it. It's so funny. <laughs> but I, I vividly fucking remember this, because I was having, like, the worst dream. But I was just fucking hysterical. <laughs> and every time he yelled, I would just cackle. <laughs> I was, I was probably like, I'm going to say like 12 at this point, maybe yeah. 12, 13 years old. 
so you know um I'm, I'm gonna chalk it up to no sleep and the beginning of puberty being why i was so fucking hysterical yeah. But I was just losing my shit. <laughs> and it was so funny. Like, every, anytime I remember it, I can't help but laugh. Because, like, by all means, it should have been a fucking terrible experience. But I was just so hysterical that everything was funny. <laughs> uh-huh. Like, I was getting in trouble and it was funny. <laughs> yeah. All I remember is falling at the bed. Being able to shut the fuck up with my dad who was... Very clearly in a panic, like, this guy was mid-panic attack. He had to have been... Shut like, the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> um, and then I kind of, I sat there on the floor for like another 30 seconds, just kind of blinking. Like, what? <laughs> and then my, uh, my, my sister, who was, uh, we were in bunk beds, so she was... Not, not the one who'd just been not born. Not the one that had just been born, not the one. Um, <laughs> like, are you okay? It's what? No. <laughs> and I climbed back up into my bed. Go back to sleep, wake up, my dad's not here, my grand and grand are in the house, and I'm like, what happened? Why are you two here? Is everything okay? Um, you know, not not knowing anything that my grand's like, oh, your dad phoned us in the middle of the night. Um, your mum's currently giving bunk beds. birth. Bunk beds scare me. Bunk beds scare me as well. I, I used to sleep in bunk beds as a kid, um, but I had somebody aggressively push me off the top bunk once, and now I'm just scared of bunk beds. See, I'm scared of bunk beds for another reason I will I would only sleep on the top bunk because I was afraid to be on the bottom bunk in case the bunk bed collapsed I was getting there the bottom bunk scares me but the top bunk also scares me so bunk beds in general just fucking <laughs> terrify me <laughs> okay it sounds like the train has stopped yes the train has stopped we can continue we having can our continue. emotional moment <laughs> <laughs> I swear you two are hopeless I pity you I give you my deepest condolences let go. I still can't get over how loud the fucking train was. Like, Jesus Fuck. Christ. That was the loudest I've ever heard it. <laughs> it was it was determined to make itself felt. Mm-hmm. Take the top bunk because someone might pee on you. That is... As somebody who's been in a bunk bed when somebody else pissed the top bunk, it doesn't... Unless the person has had, like, a lot of something to drink. Um... You're, you're not going to get pissed on if somebody pisses the top bunk because I've had somebody piss the top bunk when I've been in the bottom bunk before and it, it's never gotten past like an inch into their mattress. Yeah. So if, if that helps any. If that helps any. You will not be pissed on. You will not be pissed on. No, I mean like if it's, if, if you're like, they have like these church camp things. And those mattresses are made out of plastic, so I guess the stuff would roll right off. So like, if you're at like a church camp thing, don't take the, just don't take the bunk bunk. Never do. It's a bad idea. You're gonna get pranked. People are gonna do shit. Like, just don't do it. But if you're not in that kind of situation, then you know, take whatever bunk you want. Just don't make me take a bunk because bunk beds scare me. <laughs> <laughs> I would take the floor. Bunk beds particularly scare me now because like I've I've always been told that bunk beds can only hold like a hundred pounds. So whenever I got to the point where I crossed the hundred pound barrier. Um, which was, you know, sometime in my teens, um, I was just fucking terrified because I'm like, I'm going to collapse the bed on somebody. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. But yeah. I, I have heard stories of piss leaking through bunk beds. I, so I am also, I, I was also afraid of that happening. But I was, I was going to take the top bunk because then no one could piss on me. I liked the top bunk because it was easier to sneak my DS. In my uh, Game Boy and stuff, I could sneak it on the top bunk easier. Because what are Claire and Lawrence gonna do? Climb up to the top bunk to fucking look where I hid my shit? No, because their heads had bumped the ceiling. <laughs> I was small enough that, like, there was only, like, this much space between the top bunk and the ceiling. Like, I had to kind of wiggle up there, so there's no way they could go up there and look, so I could hide stuff on the top bunk, which I liked the top bunk for that reason. That's fair. Which, you know, is why it shook me so bad when I was at camp and somebody shoved me off the top bunk and I fell on the ground. And somehow didn't break anything, as far as I know. Um, yeah. I dislocated some stuff, but I didn't break anything, fortunately. Um, but that's why it got to me so bad, because I was like, the, uh, the top bunk, I love the top bunk, but on the top bunk, people can shove you off of the top bunk. Oh, oh no. no. Speaking of hitting heads off ceilings, I'm sorry, Bucket. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There was one bunk bed I did really, really like, and it's the one at my ex-grandma's house. One bed, 
is like horizontal and the other one's vertical and there's like a bookshelf built into one side and a desk built into the other that one there i would never have any fear of anything happening to me on the top bunk because one the guards were up really really high and two it had two giant pieces of furniture propping it up basically mm -hmm. um it was the most indestructible bunk bed i've ever seen which you know is good considering um it was used interchangeably by three very rambunctious boys me and keith So, you know, it had to be sturdy because people were, like, fucking swinging off of it and shit, dumping down onto the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, it had to be a sturdy bed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you ready, Giselle? Let me go. Don't. Don't take me away from him. Giselle! The darkness seeping into her grew thicker by the moment. And its black tendrils weren't just wrapped around her, but me as well. Stop this, Morgana! Let her! Let her go. <laughs> oh, wow. Nothing more original. <sighs> we need a devoted puppet to protect this mansion for me. So I can't give her up. Not even at your request. Besides, why should I give back something you threw away? Something you abandoned again and again. What are you talking about? You still haven't figured it out, my dear. Or are you just feigning ignorance for your own convenience? You always did like to withhold anything that might prove disadvantageous. Michael. <sighs> Giselle, give me your hand. Reach harder. Reach as hard as you can. Grab my hand. I can't. I can't do it. It's like, it's like I'm tied up. I can't move at all. Ugh. She's right there. She waited so many hundreds of years for me, finally managing to reclaim herself. And she's right there. So why can't my hand go any farther? Why can't I reach her wrist, her hand, or even a strand of her flowing hair? Why can't I get her back again? Michael. Her voice is growing fainter and fainter, more distant. The darkness shrouds her, taking her away from me. Oh, more aunt, her bucket. Her arms, her fingers, the hands she led me with, her smiling face, her once glowing grin and her more, mod and her more modest smile. The witch's darkness is stealing every last bit of her. Stop, please don't do this, please. Take me instead of her. Why does it have to be her? Why her? Morgana! Play no ads. Ooh, ooh. Why? Because your work is done, my dear. By all accounts, is the one who resurrected me. You should have become my guide as well. But you let a silly woman emotionally manipulate you and you gave up on trusting others. And then you threw your life away, deluded into thinking you were protecting her. Morgana! You already gave up the position once. Don't think you can just walk up and ask for it back. Set her. Set Giselle free. I'll do anything you ask. If you need a puppet, I'll be your puppet. It... If you want more for me, it's yours for the taking. But I can't leave her. I can't re leave her to remain in this cursed house any longer. You certainly have let your obsession for this girl take a toll on you. I much preferred the old pessimistic cynical Michael. It wasn't until I met Giselle that I truly became human. She made me into what I'm supposed to be. I can't lose her again. Is that so? Well, you'll come to the harsh realization soon enough that everything you saw in her was just a facade. It was not. <laughs> All right then. If you want her back so badly, you can have her. But in exchange, I want you to entertain me. Will you endure maddening agony for me? Will you know pain enough to make you howl? Will your face despair? Despair! Again and again and <clears throat> again. I had to. I can't believe Jim Close and talking this. <laughs> I had to. If you need her that badly, you can bear anything, can't you? 
Mm -mm. If that is what you want from me. If that will allow her to see the sun once more. <laughs> Brilliant. Wrong game, Kepik. Wrong game? What? What? Wrong game and wrong character for that matter because you remember who was voicing Junko? Me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, Morgana! Morgana! As you wish, foolish boy. I was looking for a way to keep busy anyway, so I'll use you to kill some time. Find your way to me, my dear. Find your way to me without going mad or succumbing to despair. Despair! And do hurry, or she might lose her mind again. Mm. Those memories she forced her to relive, those hundreds of years she spent locked away in her shell, all that fear that ate her away. It's a bit much to have to reflect on with a clear mind, wouldn't you say? That's why I need to be there for her. That's why I have to get her out of here. It's my obligation to her. You're the one who let go of her hand, so... Save it for Friday, you silly. No! No. Besides, how can I save it for Friday? She's dead! Dead. Good through all the shots. <laughs> Maybe that'll be enough to bring Junko back to life. <laughs> you can put a broken cup back together, but the slightest tap in the wrong place will shatter it again. Morgana! Someone outside is very amused. I heard a very echoed. <laughs> was that from outside or was that echoing from the game? No, it came from that direction. Oh, okay. I couldn't tell where it came from. I just assumed it was more fun. <laughs> it was just, just somebody saying one. <laughs> the witch's cackling fades into the distance. My outstretched hand is completely enveloped in shadows. I can't even make out the faintest outline of it. And I can't tell if I'm sinking, floating, being pushed along some invisible stream, or falling with incredible speed. <laughs> Mickey Mouse, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> um, for legal reasons, I have to say no. No. My eyes are open, but they detect nothing. The complete lack of, of sound is almost painful. Yes? <laughs> he just raises his hand out of nowhere like that. I very aggressively hit the square button and then waved my <laughs> hand and it did fucking nothing. <laughs> just like earlier, we were at non salad left beef and he was clapping trying to get me to join in with my text and then joked that he was going to put his hand on the grill and I was like, haha, and then I had the tick and almost smacked my hand onto the fucking grill. I'm sorry. And he was like, no, I'm sorry, don't actually do it. I'm like, oh, don't fucking tempt me then. It wasn't meant to tempt you. I was I, I was trying to get you to clap. And then um, I had an invasive fucking thought. You had an I'm invasive like... thought, and then my, my, my brain was like, that looks fun. <laughs> it was like, what would happen if I touched the fire? And then I was like, oh, oh, oh no, no. OCD, stop it. Stop, stop it. it. I've been it's... on fire once. I don't need to be on fire again. It's the joys of having someone with text and someone with intrusive thoughts so we bounce off each other and mm -hmm. it's going to end in disaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, what's funny is until I realized I had OCD, I always thought OCD was just like, gotta clean, gotta clean, gotta, gotta keep things organized, gotta keep things tidy. But it's it, like, in reality, it's like there's fire, gotta touch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing, anywhere. Fuck, it says we could be Mikey Moose. Mikey Moose. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Void. My consciousness begins to drift. <laughs> oh, void. <laughs> void. Did you read this? Yes. <laughs> Vague remnants of feeling that her, uh, of the feeling of her hand and mine are the only link to reality. My one and only landmark, Giselle. I must get her back. She waited, enduring for hundreds, no, almost a thousand years, and now it's my turn to act. I have to hold that resolve, hold it firm, so that I never forget her again. So that I never lose myself again. Even if I'm consumed by the darkness. You must never back down. You must never look away. You must never lose her. <laughs> Void. Void. 
Oh. oh. Is, is this it? The story behind the story. Dun, dun, dun! Well, it has the blue. But it has the, the blue. The blue theme, after. Hello? Is anyone there? Master? I'm- I'm very confused because it's got the blue but it's talking like it's her. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it is her. It okay. It is her. But it was blue. It was blue! It was blue. Why- why do this to us? Oh good. Welcome back. What's gotten into you? Uh. I thought you'd fallen asleep with your eyes open. I'm not accustomed to people needing my attention. Or, I suppose, talking face to face at all. This is... My mansion? Giselle is right in front of me. Smiling like she always did. Smiling for me. You're not her. Are you, Giselle? You have been alone for ten years. But now I'm living here with you. So, what do you say we do a little practice conversation? Practice conversation? What exactly do you think I am? Uh, yeah. No offense intended. I just thought it'd be nice if you had more back and forth skills. So in short, you're saying I'm such a poor conversationalist that I need training. Hey, 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 don't get so snippy. That's not what I meant. I'm saying we don't talk enough and I want to talk to you more. It's fun. The, the chat has just crashed on me and then came back and was like, welcome to the chat room. But like the text was moving. <laughs> Are you okay, Wombi? Yes. Is everything okay? Obs. Obs. No. This is an old memory from when Giselle first returned to the mansion. When we were just starting our new life together. When we were still feeling around in the dark. What exactly would you like to talk about then? Each other, of course. I have nothing to say. No, no, no. Let's not be rash. It can be anything. Obs is having a meltdown. Obs is having a meltdown. It can be anything. Things you like, things you don't like. Start with something small, insignificant. Does that serve any purpose? It does, yes. The more you know about someone, the closer you feel to them. And the better friends you can become. Is that how it works? No, that's out of the way. Ask me something. Ask me anything and I'll gladly answer. Her eyes are lit up like a child's. Is she really so eager to converse with me? I don't believe it. What's the matter? I'm ready for anything. Very well. I'll ask whatever comes to mind. Go for it. Um, for these ones here, we can just both and talk about them. You haven't told me your age. My age? <laughs> Take a guess. I thought she said she would call me anything. Um... Let's go with, uh, just the first one. You must be careful. We don't want to offend her, so we'll just, we'll, we'll guess along. I look like I'm still in my teens. You talk like a, uh, a young lady. Really? Because I've been trying to act older. So how old are you? Twenty. I was born as summer was starting, so I'll be twenty-one soon. I'd like you to sing a song with me on my birthday. Not a chance. Oh, come on. Have a heart. Please. You just wait. I'll make you sing. Now it's your turn. How old are you, Master? As I recall, I should be 27 this year. Oh wow, you're much older than I expected. What did you expect? You are very mellow, like I would expect of an older man. But every once in a while you give the impression of a teenage boy. Um, for what it's worth, I mean that in a good way. For what it's worth? 
Tell me about your family. You want to know about my family? We were pretty normal, I think. Not much interesting about us. We'd been able to get citizenship in the capital, but we weren't super rich or anything. In fact, it was because we were having money troubles that I ended up here. It's not easy for three women to make it on their own. You didn't have a father or any brothers? No, we lost my father to a plague when I was young. And since then it's been me, my mother and my older sister. But they're both bright, lively people. Our family motto is a smile can make anything better. Maybe that explains why she can still smile now. Even after nearly succumbing to despair. I've always wanted some brothers though. Michael. Michael. Men are more suited to physical labor, yes? Not quite what I was going for. I feel like, I don't know, the kind of things you would ask a brother and a sister for help with are different. Not quite what she was going for and not quite true, Michael. Michael. I love how he says that, but he's fucking frail as shit. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. It's falling. Yes, I'm, I'm just adjusting. Adjust. I'm not sure how to explain it, but a guy with broad shoulders and muscular arms is someone you can look up to, for instance. Someone who looks like they'd always keep you safe. She's never been betrayed by family, it would seem. She can't even imagine family hurting her. She has no idea. That those closest to you, those who are supposed to care about you more than anything, can be your greatest enemies. Well, preaching to the choir. Mm -hmm. I need to pour, pour, pour cryptic. It's fine. Don't pour cryptic me. I'm, I'm over it. It's fine. I got a new family. Blackjack family. and hookers. I mean... <laughs> Fair family. Blackjack and hookers. <laughs> that blood is a bond heavier than any chain. Um, Master, I believe your brothers are still on your side. Hmm. It's been so long, I don't know if they are. I don't know what they think of me anymore. I'm sure they're still your ally. You, you want to believe that too, don't you? You want to believe they're not enemies? Not Let's like, go leave hmm. them together well, then. Michael's like, hmm. Mm. Anything you want to believe, you should. It's such a better way to look at the world than the other way around. You have to be positive, or one day you'll crack. Always remember to have faith so that doesn't happen. I don't understand. She's honest about her emotions in a way I simply cannot be. She's the exact opposite of me in that regard. And yet, she can still read me. I don't get it. How can she understand me like that? It's like she can read my mind. Oh, are you a witch, Giselle? You're a witch. Oh. Oh. The return of the train. <laughs> <laughs> if only, if only I could just tell her everything. Make it another page in our mindless chatter. Get everything laying down on me off my chest. Is something the matter? You're cruel. What? I said you're cruel. I'm sorry. Ignore me. In preparation for the day you can finally go back home, you're going to have to stop being such a picky eater. Where did that come from? Think about how terrible it would be if, when that day finally came, you went back sickly and weak and emaciated. You wouldn't be able to enjoy yourself. You're still alright, Master. You're doing okay. But let's try to keep you healthy. Tell me your preferences. Oh, wow, how very forward of you. Huh? My taste in men is the last thing I expected you to ask about, Master. I don't recall specifying people. No, 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 don't fret the details. It's only natural to be curious, so let's make it about that. That's the last thing I wanted to talk about. Alright then, tell me about your first crush, Master. 
And I have to start? I never have them. What? No. I'm not buying it. You were living at home until ten years ago, weren't you? Surely there was someone who caught your eye. There was not. Without missing a beat. Oh, fine. Then I'll go. My first crush was the son of a blacksmith. You missed the part where you asked what kind of guy was he? This is such a pain. Since you asked, he was a huge, muscular fellow. He was so tall, he would always hit his head on the doorway whenever he came to our shop to trade. Oh. Okay, go get snack, Bucket. Get snack. Nice beefy guys are really great, huh? They make your heart get all fluttery and tight. Are you trying to imply that I don't have a chance? Oh, I think that was more admiration than love. You know, the way a group of girls will get together and fawn over a popular good-looking guy. It was like that. So you're saying the buff bastard was popular? I love how offended he sounds. He is so offended. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. I wonder what love feels like. I never got the chance to find out before ending up like this. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to get all dark on you. Say whatever's on your mind. I don't deserve your consideration. It was my family that put you through that, after all. Perhaps it's my retinas, uh, re reticence that causes her to watch her stuff around me. Damn. Need to come up with something to say. When I was 14, oh, you asked about my first crush. I knew you had one. So tell me, what was she like? She was the daughter of a noble family. Her name was Amy, and she was a year older than me. Ah, love between nobility. A world I can only even imagine. It never was. What? You didn't try to woo her. You didn't shower her in presents. Were you by chance a late bloomer, master? She was my brother's fiance. Oh, I see. So it was a love that could never be realized. That's sad. Not really. Besides, I don't feel anything for her anymore. And what I felt then was just impulses. I guess that makes us both inexperienced. I suppose it does. Me having opinions and having to keep them to myself. <laughs> How dare you have opinions? Mm -hmm. Uh, um, okay, I think that's enough of that. So it is. You like being here? Of course, I love it here. Being with you, being able to talk with you like this. See that I don't understand. What? Why not? I find it difficult to believe there exists any reason speaking with me to be anything but unpleasant. Mm, you're so negative. Hong Kong! Hong Kong! Hong Kong and Goose? Hong Kong and Goose? Oh, hush. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Michael's reaching out of the game to Michael was breaking the fourth wall to tell me to shut up. <laughs> Say that, for example, instead of me, there was someone not so pessimistic here. You would rather be talking to them, wouldn't you? I really do enjoy this. Truly. I will admit my time down in that village was, for the most part, delightful. But, oh, how should I put this? I started realising... Yeah, I'm kind of forcing myself to fit that image, and I'm trying to convince myself that's okay. But somehow, when I'm here, there's none of that. I wonder why that is. I certainly wouldn't know. You have orange tapioca pudding? I don't know what tapioca is. Um, hold on, hold on. I'll show you what it is. Okay, okay. <laughs> I suppose you wouldn't. Oh, I know. Maybe I think of you as a kid now. Okay. 
That's what it looks like. I've not personally had it, I've just seen it. Yeah, it's like tapioca, milk, sugar, I think. It has a really weird texture, but it's good. It looks like it has a weird texture. Looks like fish eggs. It does, yeah. Tapioca pudding almost looks like caviar, mm -hmm. but, you know, a different colour. As somebody who has seen them both very close to each other in person, I, I would say they definitely look very similar. Mm. And no, I wasn't rich enough to actually eat the caviar, I've just seen it. You've just been in the same room as it? I've just been in the same room as the caviar while I was getting unlimited French onion soups. French onion soups? Yeah, I took a cruise with my ex-family. And we found out very early on that you could go to eat, they had like a five-star eatery. Um, that you could go there, or you could go to like the little buffet thing. Uh -huh. And the buffet thing, the food there wasn't nearly as good. Um, the other place had really gourmet stuff, but at the gourmet place, you could technically ask for seconds. It wasn't exactly smiled upon, but you could do it. Yeah. So I would just I would go and do a lot of my eat. Jesus Christ! I would do a lot of. <sighs> Jesus. Christ. Mother. Fucker. Ah! We don't even have the windows open. The windows are shut and it's this loud. The fuck? The fuck? We're not talking about Morgana or witches. <laughs> Why are you honking? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Run then, squiggle! Fight me! He's gonna fight the train. I'm gonna fight the train. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! But you could go and you could get multiple fills um, of the nicer food. I see. And it was something I found out because Claire was doing it. And I'm like, well, you know, Claire's already making her table look bad. I'm gonna do it. Um, but no, it was actually something that you could, you know, do. They were like, yeah, this, this cruise line is mostly Americans. Like, we're used to people asking for seconds. So, mm. like, they didn't really care. I see. Um, but I would go in and just get unlimited soups. I would go in and only get the soup and get unlimited soups. Unlimited um, soups. They had some really fancy things you could get. Like, I tried escargot. I did not like it. Uh, escargot is snails on top. Mm -hmm. See, it wasn't that it was bad. It was that they had way too much butter in it, and it made me feel sick. Uh, because this is back when my anxiety was so high that I was, when my lactose intolerance was, like, at its worst. Mm -hmm. So the sheer amount of butter they put in it made me sick. Uh, um, I think I probably would have liked it otherwise. Now, not so much. I'm not as adventurous of an eater now as I was then. Mm -hmm. um, that was before I started developing food allergies and generally was afraid of foods and stuff. Yeah. But um, somebody at one of the other tables, they had like these this little limited menu. It was like a secret menu they didn't tell you about, but if you ordered from it, it actually charged your room. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just the included stuff. And uh, caviar was on that menu. So the people that were at the table with me who were sat right next to me, she got two orders of caviar... Tapioca, uh, tapioca pudding and tiramisu. Ooh. Which seemed like a really weird combination of food to me. That is a weird combination of food. But, yeah. Not you tried much. eel and sushi yesterday? Ooh. Ooh. How was that? Come again. I love talking to kids. What? Hey, no, don't give me that look. Oh, it was good. I'm glad. It sounds interesting. I... Seafood makes me nervous after I've started developing allergies to different seafoods. I'm just, like, really nervous. Yeah. I, I've i never really been a big fan of seafood. Like, fish is okay. And I mean, like, generic fish. Like, I am... Um, like, I, I would eat tuna. And... You will eat tuna straight from the can. I will. I will eat it straight from the can. While the cats mule at him in mm -hmm. anger. It's mine. Um, <laughs> but what was it? I hadn't had tilapia until I was here. Mm -hmm. Because you, you got it and were like, but it's good, honestly, trust me. Yeah, it was like Parmesan breaded tilapia. It was actually really, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I mean, I, I've i never had proper sushi. I've had the vegetarian sushi that you could buy as part of a meal deal from Morrison's. If you want sushi, um, 
there's a place we, we might be visiting some of my chosen family um, in the nearish future. Depending on where we go, one of the places we might go, I've heard, has really good sushi. Again, with I, I used to eat sushi until I found out I was allergic to shrimp, and I've just been really hesitant about sushi ever since. Mm -hmm. So I only eat the vegetarian stuff now. Um, because, you know, usually it doesn't have any cross-contamination on fine to eat it. It spooks but me a little bit if you want the to try, fact that it's raw fish. If you want to try real sushi, though, um, this place in particular, they do ramen and some stuff like that. Uh -huh. So if we go there, you could try sushi there. It's supposed to be really good. Okay. Um, there's also another place that I was considering seeing if they wanted to go, and that place also has really good sushi. It's more expensive, though, so I'd have to see what their budget is. Mm -hmm. But... If we go to either of the Japanese places that I'm thinking of going when we visit, then you could try sushi then, because both of those places have good sushi. Okay. And, you know, it's not just me assuming it's good sushi or reading reviews and knowing it's good sushi, um, but I've been with people and they've gotten the sushi at both places and apparently it's really nice. Excellent. Would you be able to entertain the math as well, I run away for? Yes. Amazing. Entertain the masses. Mango, I'm, I'm off to go and fight the train. Hey, he's gonna go fight the train. Give him a minute. I... I remember liking crab ragoons back when I could eat them. I can't eat them anymore, unfortunately. Um... Crab and shrimp are so closely related that I am very nervous that I also have a deathly allergy to, sh to crab. But I don't know for sure, but I'm not willing to chance it. But I used to eat uh, crab ragoons. I would get one exactly every time that Claire went to get this soup at this one specific, I think it was a Chinese place, um, would go get like egg drop soup and would get the crab rangoons with it because they were served as like a side that you could get that, you know, came with the soup. And so I would get exactly one every time that happened and that happened like every three months. So those were really good. There's also this, um, it's a shrimp soup. They have it at Costco. Hold on, hold on. Um, I want to heavily recommend to people because it's really good. I can't eat it anymore, but it's really, really good. Um, let me look it up and see what it's called. It's the um, shrimp uh, wonton soup. I'm trying to see if I can find the brand that I've eaten before. It's the uh, wonton tom soup stuff. Um, it's not Royal Asia though. It's some other brand. I don't remember which one exactly. It might be the Authentic Asia one. Or maybe maybe it's just actually Costco brand or something. Okay, hold on. I found it. I found it. It is... If the picture will load... Yeah, it's the Authentic Asian uh, Asia Hand-Wrapped Shrimp Wonton Ramen with uh, Yu Choi. It's really, really good. Highly recommend. Um, I can't eat it, obviously. If I eat it, I will die. But it is amazing. It was... French onion soup is currently my favorite soup, that and potato. Um, but this was my favorite soup until I became allergic to it. Highly recommend. It's actually a pretty reasonable price as long as it's not shot up massively. Um, but you could go get like an entire box with like six of them in it for the cost of going to get it at a restaurant somewhere. So um, it's really, really good. Like I said, it's the uh, Authentic Asia one. It'll have like a red CP and a golden label. Um, you can get it at Costco. It's really, really good. If you're going to have soup, I recommend like Either that one. I like French onion a lot. Um, potato soup's really good. Tomato bisque is really good. Just any kind of ramen. Like, I know ramen isn't, like, technically a soup, I don't think. But it's really good. Um, so if you haven't tried any of those, fuck it. Highly recommend. Highly recommend those to become bucket of soup. I was just telling them about my favorite soup until I became deathly allergic to it. It's this one. I see, I see. I didn't get it very often, and by the time I was allowed to start buying my anniversaries and things, 
Um, by that point, I was already allergic to it, so I would only get it on very rare occasions, but the shrimp long con soup at Costco has been amazing. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Buffett's going to a ramen place on Friday. Ooh. Pork ramen is the best in my opinion, but, you know, um, I'm also just some dumb white guy, so don't listen to me. <laughs> I like chicken ramen when you're getting the crappy instant stuff from the grocery store because I don't like their pork flavor packets. Mm. But if I'm going to go to a ramen place, I like getting the um, pork ramen. It's really good, like the spicy pork especially. Mm. Anyway, you are back. I am back. Hi. I won. What I'm trying to say is, you're a very sincere master. You're not going to smile and then stab me in the back when I turn the other way. I can relax around you, which is nice. I need to start having eggs with my ramen when I have it at the house. Um, we should also go back to making ramen every once in a while, which has been quite a while, and I'm kind of starting to feel it again. Mm. Not under cookie to egg. If you undercook the eggs, you see. need to take some wellness shots to get better. <laughs> what if the real wellness shots were just the friends we made along the way? <laughs> oh, you just blushed, didn't you? You're blushing, you adorable little thing. It's alright, you're allowed to fall for me. <laughs> Is there any window in particular you'd like to be thrown out of? Oh, no fun. what I was saying, Master. With just a short conversation, I know you better than I did before. And you me. That's fine and well, but what do I do with that knowledge? Huh? You don't do anything with it. It's fun learning things you didn't know before. That's all there is to it. And what happens when there's nothing left to learn? That's a day I don't think will ever come. People are always changing, growing, so there's no upper limit to what you could know about them. There's always something new to discover. Hmm. Maybe we'll be here for many more years, or maybe you'll be able to go home sooner than you expect. Okay, just as long as you're comfortable with it, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll never ask people to post, like, selfies and stuff if they, you know, don't want to. But if you feel comfortable enough to do it, by all means. Feel free. You almost, I don't even post selfies. You guys see my face all the time on the stream, but like, selfies, no. <laughs> no. Either way, I hope we can keep getting to know each other until then. And of course, if you're open to it, it doesn't have to end there. Oh. We can continue getting to know each other for years to come. Hmm. Now, kiss. Kiss. Hey, now, what are you looking away for? What do you think? Because you keep throwing me off balance. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That That is fine. Yeah. We completely get it. Yeah, just as long as you do whatever makes you comfortable and not a step more. I didn't... You know, when I put, put the thing in there to... Um, it's so weird because the chat um, will randomly bold things for me. Um, with the big sippy thing, it bolds cryptic spirits in the, um, discount code area. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I didn't bold that, so I was like, wait, does that actually bold? No. So, like, in the chat that you guys can see on the screen, um, that one, it's not bolded there, but it looks like in the general chat that comes from Twitch to me, it is, and it's so weird. It's bolded because it's cryptic spirits, and that's the name of the channel. Oh. Like, I could probably... Cryptic spirit should come through. Oh, it, okay, okay. That's interesting. I didn't know it did that. Yeah. Neat. Today I learned. Today you learn. A few months ago, I was doing everything in my power to avoid her. Yet now, now that smile of hers seems oddly enchanting. I don't understand. <laughs> Sorry, I'm giggling at hee-hoo. Hee-hoo. <laughs> hee-hoo. Well, ma hoo ha <laughs> Tang tang ding ding. <laughs> uh, 
I will do my best so that we can make this work. No, I'm glad to hear that. Giselle, I was too awkward back then to even compliment you on your smile, to put my feelings into words. I was too cynical to accept what you said at face value, which I know caused you plenty of grief. I'm not much better now than I was then, but I will tell you this. When I next see you, I want more than anything to let you know how much I adore your smile, how much I don't want to lose you or it ever again. Do you guys see what I mean? Like, the salvage isn't exactly a door, it's just kind of... Was, um, you must never reclaim your old self. Become my loyal servant. Always at my side. And curse them with me, my dear. Eternal suffering on all their souls. Oh, blub, blub. My consciousness, wavering like a ship at sea, is slowly drawn back to the surface. With each new breath, feeling gradually returns to my fingers. I can hear the pattering of rain from somewhere. And the sound of a crackling fire. Hurry, hurry, hurry. But I can't even figure out how to make that noise. It takes a moment for me to realize that I'm in the very same spot where I first awoke. I don't know how I got here, but I'm sitting in a rocking chair hunched forward. My head feels like someone filled it with rocks and I'm having difficulty focusing. Hey, it sounds like me every time I wake up. <laughs> My joints are creaking and I feel like I'm going to vomit. Hey, it, it is me when I wake, wake up! up. <laughs> Suffocating odor hangs over the room. What is this? Giselle? Giselle! Everything comes back to me all at once. That's right. I watched Morgana kidnap her. I watched the witch drag her into darkness, unable to reach her hand. Where are you, Morgana? Ugh. I know you're there. Cackling as you look down on me. Say something, witch. I will find you. And I will take her back. What on earth? There's a pool of liquid at my feet, rising just short of my ankles. It's sticky and uncomfortably warm. Every step I take makes a splat noise. This is... blood. The mansion has taken on a very different face from when Giselle was leading me through its halls. Blood of unknown origin not only covers the floor, but also streams down the walls and drips from the ceiling. I'm speechless as I behold this dreadful scene. Every breath I take tastes and smells of rust. It's all so unreal. Beyond my comprehension. All I can do is stare aghast, feeling like I might pass out. Giselle, are you seeing this same twisted nightmare as me? An image of her floating alone in a vast sea of blood flashed through my mind. That vision kicks me into motion. I promise I will come for you. So please just hang in there for a bit longer. I begin walking, or more accurately, dragging my heavy feet forward. The constant splashing of blood against my ankles grates at my already taut nerves. Morgana told me to find my way to her, and I could think of one place she would be. She and Giselle must be there. The stained glass window is splattered with blood, too. It creates trail-like streams running of tears running down the archangel's face. I give the window a brief glance before making my way to the door leading to the observation tower. However, why won't it open? There shouldn't be a lock. So why... Lustrous black chains seal the metal door. I recall no such obstruction present during either my life or my time hereafter. What on earth is going on with this house? No, that's not important right now. What matters is making it through this door. Damn it! I pull and push, but the chains won't give an inch. They feel sturdy enough that I probably couldn't cut through them either. There has to be some way. I consider giving up here and scouring the rest of the house. 
but I'm convinced the tower is my best chance. The fact that it's sealed now when it hadn't been before feels like a challenge more than a deterrent. I trace the length of the chain with my hand, and at the end of it I find a peculiar looking lock into which the ends of several chains have been fed. There are three keyholes? Organa fashioned a custom lock just for this. I need to find three keys to open the door, then... But I have no idea where to begin my search. I lived here for more than ten years, and yet it feels like I've stepped into a strange land. No, it's not the same house. Searching blindly is only going to waste time. And the longer I take, the more danger she's in. I met someone before who had a key. It was before I reclaimed myself. When I was exploring the mansion alone. Think, Michael, who was it? The painting. Like everything else in the house, the painting is covered in blood. That it depicts a serene rural landscape only makes the contrast that much grimmer. I remember talking to this painting, assuming it w I wasn't hallucinating. I have a question for you. Are you awake? Please wake up. <sighs> Can you hear my voice? Please, say something. Ugh. You reside here in the house like the witch, don't you? You've been with her, with her all this time, haven't you? Then you must know how to get into the observation tower. About the three keys, I need to open the lock. I need to get into the tower. Please, tell me where I can find the keys. Say something, damn it. Answer my question. Ah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Someone is there. What's the matter? I I I I feel kind of strange. Did the wet do something to me? Maybe. Please get a hold of yourself. Everything's all red, 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 red. I can't. And uh, I don't re remember using that color. <laughs> I reach my hand up to try and wipe as much of the blood off the canvas as possible. But I can't even smear it with my sleeve, let alone get it off. Ooh, I'm excited to see the hair. Ooh, the hair, the hair. The hair. Your waist your time oh, is the, the thought that counts, counts. Anyway, you had a question for me. Go on, I'm listening. I guess the painting isn't on the witch's side then. The door to the observation tower has been locked. I need to gather three keys, I think. That's my assumption, since the lock has three keyholes. Do you know of any such keys? It's such a pretty shade of red. And if so, could you tell me what the, where they might be? Oh. oh, that is a really nice shade. That is a really nice shade of red. That's beautiful. <laughs> keys? <laughs> keys? 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 Keys, 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 keys. Please stay with me. You're the only one I can ask for help. I had to pull out Snapchat for this one. Keys, 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 keys. I'm guessing that this that this is probably in some way can probably in some way connected to to our past 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 past. Her past? You you know the events of well which is always 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 fussing about what happened be between her and those t t three men what happened between them the, the keys are, are probably with the three of them the t three shadows you must have seen the, them three men shadows 
pain. Dun, 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 dun. And you'll probably find the key to watch yourself. They aren't likely to trust you easily. The, 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 the depth of their sense grows greater than the, 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 the farther you go. Visit them in order. In order, in order, in order. The, 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 the first one probably won't be a pr pr problem. So tell me something. You, you're mm, and, and my, my Michael, aren't you? What? I wanted to uh, apologize to you for so long. It's not showing up on the thing, but we're okay. The noise from outside. The noise from the thing, yeah, the fucking music playing. Yeah, somebody's parked his vehicle right outside and he's blasting music. Again. Again. A bunch of people in this building have actually put out noise complaints on this guy, and nobody's willing to track him down and stop him, so he just kind of does this all the time. Yeah. Wait! Wait. What do you mean? Do you do you know me? Did you? What do you have that you want to apologize for? Tell me, please. Could you be? But why? How? When everything else is finished, I'm going to need to visit this painting again. But now I have other things to do. The painting gave me a hint about where I could find the keys. I don't know anything about this past Morgana has with three men. I never asked her about it herself, after all. So maybe I'm going to end up having to do more than simply take Giselle back. Has my, has our involvement with the witch caused us to be swept up in our twisted maelstrom of fate? Regardless, I need to get to work. Hmm. The painting said to visit them in order. I assume he was referring to the order I entered three doors. Yep, we've got more bad endings coming up, guys. So hang tight. Let's go. All right. Um, I'm just gonna go down the way. Yeah. I can hardly believe my eyes when I step into the den. In the middle of the room is a large rectangular table. Several balls roll across its surface, and perched on one corner, looking down at the floor, is her. Giselle! Giselle! The question of why she's here never crosses my mind. All I feel is elation to see her once more. There's no room for anything else in my head. I run over to her, put my hand on her shoulder. Thank goodness you're alright! And turn her towards me. What? Uh? What? G Giselle? Giselle! I shake her, causing her head to droop lifelessly. There's not a trace of light in her unmoving eyes. Uh, uh, why, Giselle, why? Uh, uh, say something, Giselle. Say, say anything, please. Th this can't be. You, you, you can't be. You can't be. My mind goes blank. I can't catch my breath. The world is hazy. Why, why is Giselle... Why did I have to find her like this? Why? I swore I would do anything. I swore I would never lose you again. <laughs> Talk to me, Giselle. Say something, please. I want to see your smile once more. Giselle? 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 Giselle! Oh, what? Uh. It happens in an instant. Too quickly for me to make any sense of it. By the time I recognize the smell of gunpowder, everything's already fading to black. No, I'm looking at the floor. I don't have the strength to lift my head. And I don't have time to wonder what happened to me. Or why I can't stand. Before the last thread of my consciousness snaps. Two free wellness shots, Michael. That's what you need. 
Free Free loan the shots shots for life, Michael. Michael? My goodness, this room's master certainly knows how to make a mess. For someone who can barely shape a stone, something resembling a human, he has no respect for others. Such an appalling man. Oh, I feel so awful for you, my darling devoted Giselle. You have to witness the death of your beloved not once, but twice. <laughs> she ordered the wrong will with a shot. <laughs> <laughs> How, how did this happen? Michael, say something, please. You came to find me, didn't you? So get up, please. You're wasting your breath, my dear. His fate has been sealed. Only eradication awaits him. And I don't have to tell you why, do I? It's not just his body that was destroyed. He will never come back to you. For all eternity. Why? Why did this have to happen to him? Don't direct your anger at me, my dear. I'm not the one who did this. Well, I did tear you apart. I did not kill him. His death was not my intention. Look at this, Giselle, and tell me. You don't feel hatred. Tell me you don't want to curse the one responsible. You do, don't you? You want to join me in cursing the man who did this to your beloved and everyone connected to him. Or will you let him get away with it? I would never. I would never let him get away with this. <laughs> I didn't think so. He will pay. All the torment in the world isn't enough. He must pay. Yes, that's the spirit, my darling Giselle. I am here for you to inflict as much suffering on them as you desire in whatever fashion you wish. Eternal suffering on all their souls. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Yeah. Oh, God. I know. I know, Michael. But this won't accomplish anything. But I'm... I'm not strong enough to choose another path. Not now that I remember everything. All the time I waited for you. All the love I felt for you. My life is Giselle. This is too much for me to bear. Without the protection of my cocoon, I can't cope with it any other way than turn into hatred. How am I supposed to keep myself sane having lost you twice now? I just don't know. Oh. Dead end. Dead end. So even dead ends that say dead end zero, I think you're supposed to get all of them to get the keyed for it. But even if not, it's it's good to see the ways the story can go. Yeah. I descend the stairs, opening the cellar door. The first time I visited this room, the smell of blood from within was nearly suffocating. Now the entire house reeks of it, and I've started to go numb to the odor. There's no one here. Am I in the wrong place? I begin exploring the cellar, hoping maybe to find the key hidden away or abandoned somewhere. As I reach my hand out to investigate one area, A shadow leaps out of the thick darkness. Uh -huh. I have no idea what just happened. The world suddenly swings backwards. And now I'm losing grip on consciousness. The sound of flowing water. What is my body doing over there? What? on earth is going on? Giselle? I know I'm supposed to come for you, but I can't make my body move. Is this 
the end, Giselle. I, I wish I could have seen you even just once, once more. Giselle. Hello? Michael? Are you listening? Ah, uh, yes. Oh good, you're back. What's going on here? I was gone. You certainly weren't here. You do that sometimes, you know? Just stay off into space. I do? I was starting to think you were ignoring me. You were saying something? Oh, I knew it. You weren't listening. <laughs> oh, sorry. What? I was just chuckling at him being an, an idiot. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, could you say it again? I suppose if you really want me to. It was awkward enough saying it once, though. Awkward? Um... So, yeah, you know, we're a, a couple now, right? We are, yes. Not that it feels any different. So we should do something couples do. That was exactly my thought when we got together, by the way. I'm like, this doesn't feel any different than the way we were before. <laughs> yeah. Like, we'd basically already been together for fuck knows how long. Yeah. What? Come on, you look like I just told you this guy was kind. I just, I don't know what couples do be anything. I want to do something we couldn't before. That doesn't help. I still don't know what couples actually do. Would a normal man know? I have no idea what she wants. Uh, I wasn't trying to stop you. Oh, no, uh... If, um, if nothing comes to mind, then we don't have to. Forget I said anything. I'm gonna look awful if I don't come up with something. Hands. What? Does his, tu does his tummy have to run please that only the hands can satisfy? <laughs> uh, oh no, I just thought something maybe uh, hold holding hands might be something. Oh yes, I'd like that. Just hold hands. Alright, I'm ready. Give me your hand. She wants the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when that was gonna come, not... <laughs> You okay over there? My shoulder really hot. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um... This is a handshake. Why would you take my hand like that? Nothing about this says we're a couple. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Not shake my hand for one. Do it. Oh, shake hands. Uh, yes. Handshakes. <laughs> I can't believe we just shook hands on stream. <laughs> what do you expect? This is all new to me. Oh my god, don't worry. He's having an issue. He's having some, some issues. It's all new to me too. He he come. He <laughs> <laughs> he come. <laughs> oh dear, you're so silly. Alright, fine. We can take this slowly then. <laughs> come worry. <laughs> we have plenty of time after all. Dun dun dun. Be dum dum, give him gum gum. Give him gum gum. All right, now for the right answer. Bingo. Um, 
I make my way to the Rose Garden. The corridor leading there is a mess and the wooden door is rotting away. I can smell the flowers on the other side. Everything is different from when I was alive. From when Giselle planted and raised that single rose. The scene from the past spreads out before me. The field of once probably flourishing roses is now withered and gray. I, I don't think you beat the train well enough. Fuck's sake! <laughs> Quiggle! Come on! <laughs> Knowing how beautiful it had once been only makes it that much more disheartening. A bitter breeze brushes past me. God damn it. Solitude hangs over the garden like a thick fog eating away at me. This isn't what I wanted. Someone get me out of here. Oh God. Tell me, tell me I'm not the bad one here. A young man's shadow stands off to the side, muttering listlessly to himself. I recognize his voice. Do you have the key? The boy and I have never met, but I feel like I know him quite well, like we could have been acquainted for many years. I know how polite and mild-mannered he is. I know how kind, how vulnerable, how human his heart is. However, very little of that boy seems to remain. This isn't what I wanted. Oh God. Please answer me. Someone get me out of here. Tell me that I'm not the bad one here. Answer me, Mel Rhodes. I know it's you. Uh huh? As soon as I say the shadow's name, it turns to face me. I can't make out much detail, but he seems slightly less tenuous now. Who are you? Maybe he needs a wellness shot. <laughs> I think they all need wellness shots at this point. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You can get fifty percent off your first box and a lifetime of free wellness shots if you just um, do the exclamation point back there in the chat. Sign up for the thingy. Click on the linky. Do the stuff. Do the stuff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who are you? How do you know my name? My name. My name is Michael. I once lived here in this mansion. Not just a shot hole bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that name. I know it very well. But something's not right. You look different from the Michelle I remember. I'm not the Michelle that you know. Our names simply sound the same. Oh. That makes sense. She would never come to see me. I have a question for you. Do you have the key to the observation tower? I do. Would you please give it to me? I need to get into the tower. And what do you need there? There's someone there I need to find. That's all. It may not sound like much to you, but it means a great deal to me. You're not one of her prisoners then? No. I came here of my own will. To find this person? Exactly. Then maybe you can help me. Help you how? Set me free. Convince her to release me from this place. I'm begging you. The anguish emanating from the boy's shadow is so thick it causes me to recoil. There, there's a thread stark desperation in his voice. Has he been imprisoned here for hundreds of years like Giselle has? Promise me you'll get me out of here. I... Am I even equipped to judge whether that would be a good decision or not? All I know of him is his time in the mansion during the Era of Roses. I know nothing else of his life. I don't even know if I would be capable of keeping such a promise. Do I have the strength to save anyone other than her? Do you, do you absolutely need the key? You won't agree to help me without it, will you? What? I, um, I dropped it. Over there. Huh? The boy is pointing at a thick bramble of roses. Despite the flowers themselves being wilted, the thorns are still sharp. It was an accident, I swear. But I didn't want to scratch up my arm, so I, I left it there. It's not my fault there are so many thorns. I really want to hit this boy. Why couldn't you have just said so? Because I thought that if I didn't have the key, that you wouldn't help me. 
There's only so much I can do, regardless of whether you have the key. I cannot promise you anything, nor can I be the judge of you. I see. I do not have enough information to make such a decision. Cheap promises and superficial kindness will only serve to destroy the both of us. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to retrieve the key. What? You'll never get it out of those thorns. I don't care if it's at the bottom of the ocean, I will have that key. You're wasting your time. I approach the bramble, reaching for it with my right hand. From behind me, I can sense the boy watching. First, I attempt to spread the tangled thorn ridden stem so I can put my arm in without injuring myself. But they seem to be made of iron rather than plant. And my efforts prove mostly fruitless. The only opening barely large enough to fit an arm resembles the toothy mouth of a beast. Looking around the garden, I can't find anything that looks remotely useful. I guess my only option is reaching in. That's not going to stop me. I lean down, inserting my right arm into the thorny cavern. Immediately, they begin ripping at my sleeve and gashing at my flesh. <sighs> Blood spills down my arm. I'm long since dead, no longer human, but the pain is still agonizing and very much real. Giselle, she doesn't bleed. She doesn't feel pain. Am I not the same as her, then? That doesn't matter right now. <laughs> that sound effect yeah, is gross. Yeah, it is a gross sound effect. <laughs> Focus on getting the damn key. <sighs> Streams of crimson, crimson spread through the steel, like tangle-like, gnawing at my arm like a ravenous animal. Jesus Christ. Oh my god, I butchered that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My tongue is like... <laughs> Where the hell is this key? The thorny stems are twisted and layering so thick I can't see inside at all. As I dig around blindly, I start losing feeling in my arm. It's an endless deluge of pain. Hey, cut it out. You're gonna lose your arm. I will not stop until I have the key. Don't ask me for help. I wasn't even considering it. I collect what remains of my gradually fading sensation and focus it into my fingers, praying that even one of them will brush against the key. <clears throat> Damn it! But as much as I search, as much as I dig, I find nothing so much as resembling a key, which means it must be deeper than I can reach my arm. Even so, I cannot give up. Ugh! <clears throat> Hey, uh... Please be quiet right now. I need to focus. I'm sorry, I do have the key, actually. You what? I'm sorry. It didn't look like you were willing to help even if I gave it to you, so... Plus, you told me not to give it to anyone for any reason. Hold still so I can beat you. I didn't mean you any ill will. You most certainly did. I'll give you the key, so please, have mercy. Trembling in fear, the boy shadow sticks out, holding a, uh, sticks out a hand holding a key. The arm I used to dig through the thorns is so bloody and gashed I can barely look at it, but it does still function. So I take the key from him with my right hand. <laughs> Why couldn't you use your other hand? That's gross. That's the idea. You're kind of a jerk, you know? That's a laugh coming from you. Do you have any idea how much that hurt? I know. I'm sorry, really. But hey, you're alive, so it's no big deal, right? But wait, can you either can, can you actually say either of us are alive? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I do appreciate you giving me the key, though. Seeing as it seemed to be rather important to you, too. Hey, this person you want to get back is... Are they really worth going through all of this for? She is. She's the one person who ever loved me. And she's waiting for me. I see. You know, I had someone that meant a lot to me, too. My sister. Which one? The witch. The one with the flaxen hair, like me. If you happen to see her, do something nice for her, please. 
that, I would say, is your responsibility. Yeah, you're right. But, but I'll keep it in mind. Thanks. The tale I witnessed, the boy pushed his sister away. For understandable reason, admittedly. But now he seems to bear no grudge for her. Did something else happen between them? Even if it did, I don't have time to ask about it. I'll be on my way. All right, take care. There are two more keys. Watch out, though. They're not the most friendly people. And they'll probably be even more enraged locked up like this. I, I appreciate the warning. If only someone like you had shown up sooner and taken the keys from us. Goodbye. After bidding me farewell, the boy's phantom dissipates into the shadows of the Rose Garden. I wonder if he's gone back to mindlessly muttering his regrets. Mm. I should get going. See if this is any different than the dead end we just got going here. I can hardly believe my eyes when I step into the den. In the middle of the room, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. It's exactly the same. Did he order the right wellness shot this time? No, he did not. Nope. <laughs> Still the wrong wellness shot. Down. I was like, wait, which one is it? <laughs> I descend the stairs, opening the cellar door. The first time I visited this room, the smell of blood from within was nearly suffocating. Now the entire house reeks of it, and I've started to go numb to the odor. There's no one here. Am I in the wrong place? I begin exploring the cellar, hoping to maybe find the key hidden away or abandoned somewhere. As I reach my hand out to investigate one area, <clears throat> a shadow leaps out of the thick darkness. <clears throat> it's so swift I have no time to react. My body freezes in place. A shadow stands before me, holding the tip of a blade mere inches from my face. A key. You have a key. I do, yes. Cold sweat trickles down my back. My voice is shaking and there's no hiding it. The shade appears to be glaring at me, though I cannot make out its face. After a few seconds, it withdraws its blade. Let me see it. The boy's key. Did he give it to you? In the Rose Garden, yes. Are you two acquaintances? How could that be, now? You are from a completely different era and country. Who, who are you? I'm... No, never mind. Who you are is relevant to me. Or are you human now? If you are speaking of my nature, then no is the only answer I can give you. You didn't kill me, though. If you wanted to, you could have easily skewered me where I stand. If that's what you want, I'd be happy to oblige. What did you come here for? For your key. I came to ask if you would give it to me. You mean to open that door? I need to get into the tower. Yes. Let's see. Take it. E. Oh, hello, Dakota. 
Time for an overhaul. What? What? The man shadow tosses a key at my feet. I'm not quite sure what to think. I didn't expect him to give it up so readily. What? Take it. I won't stab you in the back while you're bending over. I thought you were supposed to hold on to this at all costs. I no longer have any reason to guard that key. In the past, I might have skewered your head from your shoulders the moment you mentioned it, though. What point in the past? That's a question. I wish I knew the answer to. Oh, I see. I haven't seen that movie in so long. It's been ages since I've seen that movie. Honestly, I'd completely forgotten it existed until just now. <laughs> oh, stretch. Oh, stretch. Hey, do you know why I'm here? Where is this place? When is it? Why can't I get out of here? What's happened to me? I... Tell me. I have no idea what's going on. Not a single goddamn idea. Neither do I. You can. It's okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dogs barking at him from outside. They know. Get out. Take the key and get out of here. Get out. I can't bring myself to say anything to the enraged shadow, so I follow his command, picking up the key and departing the cellar. But anyway, how have you been, Dakota? How have things been? How how go life? Having a good Wednesday. We've we've got people who are gonna go have ramen. We've got people doing the hair dyes. We've got son starving to death in the walls because I don't know he's he's on like a hunger hunger strike or something. <laughs> There's a lot of chaos going on here. A guy searching for keys from dead people. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot of random crap that's been said throughout the stream. Don't mind me, I'm just I'm being silly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was dead for a second. Best mix too, though. Viva la chip! Viva la chip! <laughs> what could have possibly happened between these people? The painting mentioned a past with them, and Morgana spoke of the wicked men she cursed. Does that mean they did something awful enough to earn Morgana's spite? Right now, though, I must push onward. If I'm not mistaken, the final key should be in that room. The room with the, uh, billiards table? What is billiards, anyway? I should get moving. Once I have this key, I can get into the observation tower. I'm almost certain Morgana's waiting for me there. With Giselle. So I gather up my resolve and hurry to the last room, not wanting to take even a second longer than necessary getting her back. That's fair, Bucket. Hail dye does take a lot of effort. Unless you're like me and you put it in like shampoo and just hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly believe my eyes when I step into the den. In the middle of the room is a large rectangular table. Several balls roll across its surface and perched on one corner, looking down at the floor is her. Giselle! Giselle! The question of why she's here never crosses my mind. All I feel is elation to see her once more. There's no room for anything else in my head. I run over to her, put my hand on her shoulder. Thank goodness you're all right! And turn her toward me. What? Uh? Uh? G Giselle? Giselle! I shake her, causing her head to droop lifelessly. There's not a trace of light in her unmoving eyes. Uh, uh, why, Giselle, why? Uh, uh, say something, Giselle. Say anything, please. This this can't be. You, you can't be. You can't be! My mind goes blank. I can't catch my breath. Gun wellness the world was hazy. Why is why is Giselle? Why did why did I have to find her like this? The unwellness shot. The yes. unwellness shot. <laughs> why I swore I would do anything. 
I swore I would never lose you again. No, 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 this can't be. A thought crosses my days to spare rot mine. It's probably nothing more than a vain hope, but... Not a drop of blood spilled from my breast. That's right, she doesn't bleed. This can't be her. This isn't her. Or, or maybe Morgana has the power to alter Giselle's very nature. Kill her with a flick of the wrist. No, I don't even want to think about it. There's no hope to be found down that path. All I can do is pray. Beg for her to still be alive. Or if alive isn't the right wor uh, word, herself. My prayers bring me back to reality, which is when I realize... <clears throat> There's something hard pressed against the back of my head. I hear a harsh metallic click. A piercing bang rips through the air as I drop to the hard floor. My ears are ringing painfully. Through the cloud of smoke and confusion, I see a man's silhouette. Hmm. Mask. It takes several moments for me to recognize the object in his hand as a gun. Not only because it's draped in shadow, but because I've never seen one with my own eyes. Had I not witnessed what they were capable of through the stories, I would not have understood how terrifying they were. Not a problem, though. I'll finish you with the next one. Now you hold still, boy. Start running around like a rat and I can't guarantee you a painless death. Wait, hold on a second. What are you trying to kill me for? Because you make too much goddamn noise, that's why. Don't tell me you're the one who... What? I turn my gaze to the large table. Giselle wasn't there. I must have been it must have been an illusion after all. The realization sends a weave a wave of relief through me. I still have a gun in my face though. Furious man you are. Does the table warrant your attention more than me? I have a request. Could you give me the key in your possession? That's all I need, then I'll leave and stop making a racket. I'm not sure you understand your predicament, boy. Because if you think you're in any position to be asking favours, you're dumber than you look. <laughs> First off, I don't even know what key you're talking about. I don't believe that. The other two had keys. You telling me they gave you their keys? Sounds like they really do know each other. See for yourself. I believe you should recognize these. Are you collecting them to enter the tower? Are you going to see Morgana? There seems to be a hint of tension in the man's voice. Though I can't see his face, I can sense waves forming within him. I brace myself for either rejection or hot lead. But the apparition gives me neither. Take me with you. What? You have the other two keys, don't you? Then you can open the door. Bring me to the witch. Wait. Slow down. What are you planning to do when you see her? What do you think? She has to... She has to... She's gone. She has to what? What was he trying to say? He... On the floor where the shade stood is now a key. Curious, I, curious though I am about his last words. This makes three. I have all the keys now. Are you trying to rile me up, Morgana? Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so he, he put the keys in the lock. Whatever the text is, done on, but he put the keys in the lock. The keys fit perfectly on the openings in the lock, and when I insert the last one, it clicks open. The chain sealing the door falls to the floor. They're waiting beyond this door at the top of the stairs. I start pondering what I can even do in a face-off against Morgana, which sends a nervous shudder down my spine. I'm not going to back down regardless, but she is a witch, and I'm merely a human. Or, formerly a human. I'm not a master swordsman, nor do I wield a gun. I have nothing at all with, with which to fight her. I still have to confront the witch, though, no matter what. As laughably reckless and as foolish as I may be, I have no other option. I place my hand in the door, preparing to climb the tower where I once spent my last breath. Giselle walks safely away in the chamber at the top. The tower where I first met the witch. No hesitation. Dun dun dun. What? 
a cliffhanger. Shocking. I would never. A cliffhanger on our channel. Unheard of. I never do this to you guys. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we'll be finishing the salvage on our next Wendy's Screams. 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 Whatever. Something. Things. <sighs> Words. Mouth failing right now. Mouth fail. Yes, mouth fail. Anyway, would you like to talk about our streaming schedule? Um, yes. So, we will be back tomorrow. We will be starting Resident Evil 6. As far as we know, there is a co-op mode on that. So, we will be playing the same way we played Resident Evil 5. Um, and then on Friday, we will be doing the Deadly Life section of Danganronpa Sugar Happy Havoc. Um, chapter 2. 2. 2. Um... And then Saturday is the boy. Just you know, while you're talking, the boy. The boy. Saturday is social Saturday. Yes. Um. Da -da -da at this point. Dead by daylight, as of now, but that might change. Depends. Yeah, there's um something going around where they're not sure if it's an issue with another game or if it's an issue with a certain anti-cheat software. If it ends up being an issue with the anti-cheat, we'll have to pick a game that doesn't utilize it, but. If people are correct and it's just a different game that's completely unrelated, then, you know, we'll be good to play it. But we'll let you guys know closer to the time. Yeah. But look at the gizmo. Look, look at him. Look at the gizmo. I was just like, you, we didn't take, like, a proper break today. You guys haven't gotten to see him, so let me just, boom. The boy. Boom. Gizmo time. Gizmo time. I love how he's just plopped in front of the camera. Uh-huh. We got a new uh, mount for the camera because the one that we had... Um, was really slidey on the glass, as you guys noticed, when it kept falling over. Yeah. So we got a new one that's actually suction cupped to the glass to keep his camera more firmly in place. And when we were setting it up earlier, he came over and stuck his face right in the camera and started blocking the glass. Yes. He was like, hello, look at me. It's like camera time. I do think it's funny that he recognizes the camera as something to look at. Yeah. Because you can put other stuff in front of his tank, and unless it's his crickets, he pretty much ignores it. But if it's the camera or the crickets, he pays attention. Yes. He knows. He knows. But, yes. Yes. Um, and then, obviously, on Tuesdays, we've got spirit streams coming up. So, mm -hmm. um, he's finished from the ground up, so he's going to be coming up with a name for another segment and doing other stuff. Yeah. Um, but you can, you can go to his channel and expect to see him either working on stuff for this channel... Maybe working on commissions if he has them, and if he has the permission of the people he's doing the commissions for. Mm -hmm. Or, if he has nothing better to do, I've got a piece that I want commissioned. I see. So, all kinds of things that could potentially happen. So many things. So many things. So, anyway, that's enough of the gizmo. Enough of the gizmo. Yes. You can look at us now. Look at us. Anyway, let us see if we've got anyone to read. Anybody to read today. Ba, 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 ba. Looks like we've got Lady Kale's VTuber with Subnautica. Ooh, exciting. Ooh, and the model she's using today looks really cool. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, the, the chat was acting weird as if I'd already rated her, and it's like, no, I'm still waiting for the read to be ready. <laughs> Anyway, keep it creepy. Keep it weird. And most importantly, stay, stay queer. queer. And don't piss off any witches. Uh, bye bye. bye, -bye.